Welcome colleagues to this module on open educational resources and in this module we will understand what are open educational resources and how they are useful to us. As you know access to quality education has been a cause for major concern for successive Indian governments. In year 2007 legislation was enacted to promote universal education namely the Right to Education Act which lays out a comprehensive vision for raising the education profile of Indian children. While the right to education exists officially, India continues to face challenges to actualizing its goal of equitable access to quality education. These challenges include geographical and demographic barriers that inhibit access to educational institutions and a shortage of qualified educators. Such barriers are escalated by outdated facilities, overcrowded classrooms, outmoded teaching methods, and declining research standards. The growth of India's population indicates that access to education will continue to be a major concern. Currently, over 500 million Indians are age 5 to 25 years old. There are nearly 14 million students enrolled in 31,000 institutions and currently there are about 800 universities. With the largest K-12 population globally, India will have the largest population in the higher education age bracket by the year 2030. It is expected that the number of eligible students will double by the year 2020, that's next year, indicating an enormous gap between the demand for higher education and its supply. In this context, the National Knowledge Commission, which was charged with proposing education policy to the Indian government, recommended in 2007 that the role of open educational resources be elevated as a means for supporting access to quality education for all. For example, through the establishment of faculty professional development programs on open educational resource creation and use. In this module, we shall learn about open educational resources and how they can contribute to the national educational development. So when this module is over, you will be able to define what constitutes an open educational resource. You will find the value of open educational resource in solving real world problems. You would be able to narrate the five R's of open educational resources and identify the implications of open educational resources for learning in a digital age. You would also be knowing the advantage of open educational resources. Now, have you ever found something from the internet that could be a perfect resource, for example, image, video, quiz, etc., for your course? and you spent hours trying to figure out the copyright issues with those resources. You couldn't find any term of use and there was no author information, so you didn't know who to contact to get the permission. Wouldn't it have been nice if that resource somehow said, I'm free to use, no strings attached, you don't need to ask for my permission because it is already granted. Open educational resources are an answer to that. Now, there are millions of educational resources out there that are available for others to freely use. There are of all kinds available, full courses, course materials, modules, textbooks, streaming videos, tests, software, many other tools, materials and techniques used to support access to knowledge. Let us see how we can define open educational resources. These are educational materials that reside in the public domain or have been released under an open license that permits their free use and repurposing by others. This is as what suggested by Hollett Foundation. To put it another way, the open educational resources meet these criteria in formats, material in any medium, digital or otherwise, conditions that either reside in public domain or have been released under an open license, nature permits its free use or repurposing by others. Now let us have a look on what are the benefits of using OER. The development and promotion of open educational resources is often motivated by a desire 
to curb the commodification of knowledge and provide an alternate or enhanced educational paradigm uh, like from wikipedia as oer as an educator what benefits do you see in using oer for you or your students here are some of the benefits of using open educational resources that i have seen while working with oer over past several years like it saves costs for students open educational resources can offer drastic savings in the cost of education some students who otherwise cannot afford to buy expensive textbooks or course materials will appreciate this affordable operation option while taking your course these have been defined by various agencies on the basis of their characteristics and implications the term oer open educational resources was first defined by unesco in the year 2002 as any type of educational material that are in the public domain or introduced with an open license and can range from textbooks to curricula syllabi lecture notes assignments tests projects audio video and animation let us see some of the definitions which have been given by various institutions say for penn state university they define that any type of educational materials that are available to the university community with little or no cost it may also be the case with psu oer that the nature of these open materials means that students faculty and staff can legally and freely copy use adapt and reshare them within the university community let us see how the oer commons define them according to oer commons open educational resources are teaching and learning materials that you may freely use and reuse without charge they often have a creative commons or gnu license which state specifically how the materials may be used reused adapted and shared the cape town open education declaration stated that these oer resources should be freely shared through open license which facilitate use revision translation improvement and sharing by anyone resources should be published in formats that facilitate both use and editing and that accommodate a diversity of technical platforms whenever possible they should also be available in formats that are accessible to people with disabilities and people who do not have access to the internet UNESCO also gave a definition of open educational resources defining them as any type of educational materials that are in the public domain or introduced with an open license the nature of these open materials means that anyone can legally and freely copy use adapt and reshare them they range from textbooks to curricula syllabi lecture notes assignments tests projects audio video and animation William and Flora Hollett Foundation have done lot of good work for open educational resources and they also define them as teaching learning and research resources that reside in the public domain or have been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use and repurposing by others according to them oer include full course course material modules textbooks streaming videos tests software any other tool or material which can support access to knowledge now to have a better understanding of definitions proposed by uh, different organizations you may like to refer to the figure uh, which is given by the creative commons which will be displayed on your screen now let us see the history of open educational resource movement the mit open courseware project is seen as the first recognized oer project though the open education movement predates this event with roots in open source open and distance learning and open knowledge david wyle who coined the term open content in 1998 and oer was first used at unesco's 2002 forum on impact of open courseware for higher education in developing countries in september 2007 a meeting in cape town led to the cape town open education declaration released on 22nd january 2008 the oer movement is comprised of four main categories the first is open courseware 
which is a digital publication of high quality educational materials that are freely and openly licensed and are available online to anyone anytime they include course planning evaluation tools along with thematic content open courseware initiatives range in scope from mirroring traditional classroom sized endeavors to the emerging massive open online course model which enables large scale participation by anyone with internet access the second is oer publishers the rapid rise in the cost of textbooks combined with the high demand for affordable alternatives has led to the emergence of new open publishing efforts for textbooks and other oer this category also includes initiatives geared toward developing specific collection of oer such as khan academy and seller foundation the third type is oer repositories these digital repositories have evolved into a convenient place to find share remix oer from a variety of sources they range in scope from portals and gateways that provide access to information on oer and aggregated content resources to institutional repositories with the source content and tools to develop oer and the fourth one is publicly funded initiatives increasingly policy makers on the local state and national levels are developing policies that encourage the creation and adoption of oer approaches vary from directly funding the creation of oer to conditioning federal and state research dollars to require that any education resource produced as a result of that funding may be made openly accessible now let us see what are the types of oer we can define them in various uh, uh, forms and which you can see from the graphic on the screen that they can be of various varieties of open education resources let's now understand what are the five r's of openness as you can see in the table the open educational resources differ from traditional educational resources in their licensing and permissions the term open content and open educational resources describe any copyrightable work traditionally excluding software which is described by other terms like open source that is either in the public domain or licensed in a manner that provides users with free and perpetual permission to engage in these 5r activities the first is retain that is you have the right to make own and control copies of the content that is you download duplicate store or manage the second is reuse you have the right to use the content in a wide range of ways that is in a classroom in a study group on a website or in a video the third is revise that is you have the right to adapt adjust modify or alter the content itself for example translating the content into another language fourth is remix the right to combine the original or revised content with other material to create something new for example if you incorporate the content into a mashup and remix it from there fifth r is redistribute that means you have the right to share copies of the original content your revisions or your remixes with others for example if you give a copy of the content to a friend that is redistribution and these five hours were created by david wiley who have done lot of good work into that and the explanation can be uh, shown through this illustration which will be displayed on your screen now so after understanding five hours of open content let us have a look on the advantages of open educational resources and there are many many advantages of adopting open educational resources like they improve student success while saving costs many research studies published in peer reviewed journals which include over 50000 college or university students 93% of the students whose faculty assigned oer in place of commercial textbooks received final course grades that were same or higher than the control students who used commercial textbooks that shows that it is a cost saving initiative it can create reliable savings students can count on when individual faculty replace commercial textbooks with oer 
students get a nice surprise when an entire degree program replaces commercial textbooks with oer students get a predictable decrease in the cost to graduate that can factor into their financial planning and then it increases the academic freedom for faculty these give faculty the legal permission necessary to personalize teaching and learning materials for their students or have students personalize them for themselves or for each other opening the door to a wide array of teaching and learning activities that are simply not possible with commercial curriculum then you can make your program more attractive to poten- potential students say after this tidewire community college which is a public community college in southampton roads in united states launched its jet degree initiative in the fall of 2013 it was 20% cheaper to graduate from this jet business administration program compared to the students who started the traditional business program in the fall of 2012 these savings add up to thousands for every student who completes the oer program and that's a marketing message that resonates with students who are shopping for the best value and it speeds students through the program the initial research studies indicate that students whose faculty assign oer in place of commercial textbooks drop their courses at lower rates and keeps them on track to graduate the students also reinvest the money they saved by not buying the textbooks in taking additional credits and helping them move through their programs at a faster speed and not only for the students it increases the institutional revenue also when the students stay in a class rather than dropping out institutions hold on tuition revenue they would otherwise have refunded to the students when students reinvest money they would have spent on textbooks to take additional credits institutions receive net new revenue and when students move steadily towards graduation school that receive formula funding see an additional positive financial supports there are various advantages for faculty as well like it increases student retention by reducing cost it assures academic freedom to modify or add content to our specification it extends our academic profile it provides more relevant and engaging materials for our students and then there are benefits for students also like they get content either free or at a very low cost these materials are easy to find and access even before the class starts and these materials are more customized and relevant and thus are very suitable for students so in conclusions i would say that Open educational resources have been found to be of great source to the teachers and students. It helps institutions in creating quality course content and cost savings. And there are various repositories of OER which are available which can be accessed by the faculty and the students. Thank you.